Hi, Asim. My name is Malika. Uh, I'm a host at Urban Asian, and I'm really excited to delve into your work in Barzak and also your previous work as well. Um, so thank you so much for speaking with me. Oh, thank you for having me. So just kind of jumping right in, how did you come up with the idea for Barzak? Because it looks incredibly intriguing and interesting. So how did you delve into this idea? Sure. Um, well, it was sort of during the pandemic time that I was writing it. Um, you know, we had COVID, we had death and loss and grief all around us. And it was sort of my way of trying to cope with that and sort of have some kind of a self-healing process. Um, and that's what you know, Barzak was, and that's why it's probably the most intimate story that I've ever told, even though it's on a much epic and, and bigger scale than the, my previous work. But I think, you know, Shilja was kind of interested in my producer, was interested in me sort of exploring family intimacies. And that's something that I kind of gravitate towards all the time myself, uh, having done it in cake. So I wanted to tell a story about a dysfunctional family, about exploring intergenerational trauma, about how sort of grief carries forward amongst generations of how sort of, you know, toxicity within the masculinity kind of builds and sort of, you know, I kind of alluded to it in Jurel's, but it was from a female perspective. And I kind of want to see how it looks like from sort of, you know, generally well-developed men, but also still having those kind of hangups and sort of having uh, maybe not given their all in their relationships to women, et cetera. So just wanted to really explore sort of a masculine sort of side to all of these things. Um, I'd also lost my father like a few years back and I was kind of de processing that grief as well. I have a 10 year old who's named after my father. So uh, it kind of sort of was also dealing with like what of my dad was I going to pass to him and like sort of how do you explain to children what death is and sort of, you know, all of those existential stuff was going through me and kind of that was the genesis of Barzak. So it's really interesting that you mentioned that because I was doing research into your previous work as well. So I have a few questions about that later sure. on. But speaking about Barzak, why did you decide to cast Favad Khan and Sanam Saif? Because, you know, they obviously are very iconic coming from Zindagi Guzada and fans are crazy over their pairing and their chemistry and just them together. And I've seen so many people be incredibly excited for Buzzer just to see them back on screen. So yeah. what was the casting process like and how did you kind of hone in on those two actors to be the people who helmed this project for you? Uh, yeah, so I, I would uh, see this as an ensemble piece where I think the entire okay. family and every member in the family has equal weightage. Um, so I wouldn't see just Fawad and Sanam leading this. Um, it, it is all, as you would know, around and sort of an aging patriarch and the strange children kind of coming together for this family reunion and not knowing who he's actually marrying. Um, and sort of so casting was really about creating that family, about pre giving the right actors uh, the, the sort of these characters to kind of make their own and play with them and kind of really develop them. And I think Sanam and I have a long working relationship from Cake onwards. Uh, we know each other, we understand each other quite well. And I think the the character that I'd kind of written, Sanam just fit that really well. You know, Sherizad's character requires this certain amount of stoicism and sort of marrying hardness with softness and sort of saying a lot with her eyes, but also withholding. And I think Sanam's really great at it, especially in this show. Like for me, this is one of Sanam's best performances. And and with Fawad, I think that was sort of something that I hadn't, you know, I can't take credit for it because I didn't think of it originally. It was my producer, Vakas. Uh, and Vakas was like, why don't we approach uh, Fawad? And, and we did. And uh, and Fawad, again, he's a, you know, he's a true actor. And all these actors kind of want are shows or, uh, or, or films that kind of really allow their craft to flourish. And I think that this role was something that Fawad had not done before, you know, playing a single dad, playing sort of this really interesting dynamic with his own father, who is he's estranged from, but also his son, who's nine years old. And I sort of, he really wanted to delve into that character. So I think it just, they just really fit. I wasn't so much thinking about, it wasn't a strategy. It wasn't like, I'm going to bring an iconic couple and that's what I'm going to base the story around. It was the story and these actors kind of fit these roles and are great for these roles. And that's sort of how the genesis of casting was. Yeah, and speaking of, you know, audience reception, because I'm seeing a lot of people be incredibly excited for this project, specifically, you know, Gen Z and millennials and a younger audience. Um, but as someone who creates a lot of thought-provoking 
pieces in Pakistani cinema and dramas, whereas a lot of the mainstream Pakistani dramas delve more into traditional ideologies and more romantic stories. Do you ever get nervous that there might not be an audience yet that's looking forward to watching this because they, you know, might gravitate more to the rom-coms or the romance stories instead of more of like a quirky, mysterious, intimate family thriller? Do, does that yeah. ever make you nervous? Um, I think it used to. Uh, I think slowly, slowly, I've kind of come into my own. Uh, as I've done more projects, I think Cake, I was nervous. It was sort of this middle ground show featured around women, no song and dances as, as for, a, for a feature film that was, you know, pretty big. And and again, with Churels, it was uncharted territory for so many of us and for the actresses and stuff. But I think uh, I have been lucky enough to always find my tribe. Uh, and mm -hmm. whether that is big or small, it's a very vocal, very uh, sort of connected tribe. And for me, that is enough. Um, I And I can only... For me, I, with time, I have realized that the only way you can be satisfied is by creating content that is authentic to your own voice and yeah. to your own and as honest as you it can be to you. And then if it's honest and authentic, then you will find someone who will also find it honest and authentic. It might not be the vast majority of people, but there will be enough people who will find it, who will connect with it, who will own it. And I think that is sort of the only way you can work. I There are a lot of this is not like, I think all kinds of content should be made, but there are other much better writers, much better directors who can do the mainstream stuff, who can do the traditional ideologies, like you said, and they can find their own audiences. But it doesn't make sense for me to try to do something that doesn't feel naturally mine or naturally my territory. So I think I just want to stick in my lane. I want to explore within that lane. I want to do different things, different genres, but I want to do it with the same sort of, vision that I've kind of always had yeah and I have to say I mean I watch Pakistani dramas and I find them incredibly entertaining and they're great to you know watch like you're saying done by the directors who are very passionate about that and I would love to see you know I'm really excited to see Barzak and I'm really excited to kind of see your thought processes on screen and so speaking of that do you or are you hoping, I guess, is a better way of framing this question for more opportunities like this to produce, you know, content like Barzak with openings of OTT platforms in Pakistan itself? Because Z5 Global is right now your producing house and, you know, you're able to stream it globally for audiences. But are you also hoping that, you know, in Pakistan, there can be the rise of OTT that has happened in India itself over the last five to 10 years? Yes, but I think it will take time. And I think what, what it needs to be two-step process. So I think, you know, Z5 Global has been a big champion of my work and I kind of did Churels for them and I am now doing um, Barzak for them and sort of really opened up doors, both India, Pakistan, but also internationally, like uh, the amount of love that Churels has kind of received in UK and US was phenomenal. So yeah. I think for me, that, that has been a great thing. And now, as far as I understand, you know, there are a couple of other streamers who are also doing shows with Pakistani creators, um, you know, and probably scheduled for next year, et cetera. So I think the, the way it needs to happen is that we need to show that we can make great content. That content needs to get an international audience. And I think once that becomes sort of not once in a year, or once in a two year, but rather like six, seven projects in a year, I think that once we have some semblance of a library, I think then we can start thinking about how to have our own OTT platform if we need one. Because frankly, I think there is so much, uh, you know, amalgamation uh, coming together within the streamers in the international, in the global, you know, press. Like most streamers, I feel like the 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 smaller ones will disappear with time. I feel like it will be like a conglomeration of the bigger ones. And I feel I don't know necessarily that if smaller OTT players in smaller countries will survive. I would love to see an OTT platform within Pakistan, but I think it needs to only begin with first having the content to be able to show yeah. it. Because there's so much infrastructure that is required to be able to actually create something of that scale. And I think sort of India has obviously had like a, you know, uh, advantage over us in that sense that, you know, it has a lot of content. Bollywood is, a you know, again, a well-oiled machinery. And there have been all the international players have had a presence. OTT players have had a presence in India for a very long time, which has not been the case in Pakistan. 
Yeah. And I mean, going off of that, I know that Netflix has now helmed, you know, a mass project coming from Pakistan with a bunch of Pakistani actors and stars, pretty mainstream people. Yeah. Are hoping that after that project, there might be, like you're saying, the bigger production houses can then start to invest in more, um, you know, indie or non-mainstream scripts and storylines, things that you know, like cake or churros that is really talking about deep rooted societal issues that can go onto these bigger streaming platforms like Netflix yeah. or Amazon Prime, etc. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think I think it needs to sort of I, again, I think people need to do what they're good at. And I think everyone is kind of trying their best to do that. I think it, there's been a general shift. Um internationally as well in terms of sort of trying to make the streaming content more mainstream and yeah. i think that's why i have been super lucky to have z5 global because I, you know berserk it has not fine it has an all-star cast and it has sort of those core emotional values attached to it but it is a different endeavor and yeah. there aren't that many streamers who are right now kind of investing in in in, in endeavors like that they're not there is less championing of creators uh, in terms of, you know, you have the full liberty to do the type of content that you want to do and tell, have your voice. It's more, as I see it progressing, because it's becoming more about subscribers, it's becoming more about profits. So there's more and more pressure, even on streamers. And I think they were much more experimental a decade ago, five years ago. But I feel yeah. like generally the biggest streamers are getting less and less experimental. I hope that changes. I hope there is a sort of a middle ground where you can actually do both. And, you know, you do massive mainstream content but you occasionally do sort of, you know, off kilter stuff as well. So, but you know, I've, I've, I've had a really great relationship with Z5 Global because two projects back to back like that, that they've kind yeah. of, you know, invested in me and my voice. And that brings me perfectly to my last question because Cake got you multiple, you know, critical acclaims through international film festivals, UK film festivals. And then you got a lot of critical um, appreciation through Jurails as well, with just the topics and what you delved into. And yeah. now with Barzak. So do you feel like moving forward, some of your scripts, you really want to delve into these more harder hitting societal, like I was saying earlier, deeper rooted issues, such as racism, misogyny, what happens after death, you know, things like that. And do you think you want to continue or have you ever thought, you know, maybe if I can create that topic into a lighthearted script, have you ever wanted to mesh both of them together? Or do you feel like this is what you want to continue doing? Sure. No, I, th I think I'm open to all sorts of genres. I think historically, I have been a little skeptical of being of doing comedy, of being, of, of actually just not knowing my own ability to do it. That's kind of changed because I'm doing, you know, I'm based out of the UK, so I'm doing a lot more projects there now. So I just sort of did a series, not just like a couple of years ago, called Count of Dullah, which is sort of a British comedy, horror comedy, which I didn't write. It was written by a brilliant writer called Kamil, and I directed that. So I think that was me dipping my toes and sort of saying, experimenting with other kind of genres and doing it. That's very light. Um, it's very gag driven and it was something that I had never done and I don't think I can ever write that but it was a really fun experience directing it I then sort of did um, a show for the BBC called The Famous Five which is based on children's book it came out on Hulu in the US um, yeah so I, I did I directed one of the episodes for them which is sort of you know again I had read Famous Five as a kid so it was a really really great experience for me to go back to my own childhood memories and sort of and do something that my kid would be happy to watch because most of the content yeah. that I've made, he's not been able to watch. So I think I am trying to sort of uh, expand, at least on the directing front. I think writing is sort of harder because uh, uh, you gravitate towards the stuff that you kind of naturally are, are like really urging to talk about. And that yeah. tends to be the type of stuff that I write. But I think, you know, I think in, in time I do, I do want to explore as much as possible. I think hopefully it'll all still have a bit of me in it. Um, uh, so you'll be able to say that this is sort of, there's a little bit of Asim in it or he's doing it in his own way. But yeah, no, I would definitely open myself up to new lighter genres. That's amazing. And now I have to go to Hulu because I read The Famous Five. So now I have to go watch it on Hulu <laughs> tonight. I did episode two, so definitely watch that one. <laughs> okay, perfect. Because this was one of my favorite, like, N and Blyton books amazing. when I was little. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. that's perfect. I have to run to Hulu now for tonight. That's like <laughs> nightly viewing. Um, thank you so much for speaking with me. And I'm really excited oh. to watch Barzak and, I mean, Favad Khan and Sanam Sayyid are some of my favorite actors. And I I really am so excited to kind of see your vision come on screen and 
you thank know, you. the storyline. So thank you so much for speaking with me. Oh, and just great speaking to you, Micah. Thank sure. you.